Well, good morning, St. Andrews. My name is David. I'm the liturgist here at the church, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our Easter Sunday service and to be one of the first people to say to you, He is risen. He is risen there, we get to do that a lot today. Uh, if anyone is still hanging out in the narthex, we invite you in to worship with us as we begin our service as Dr. Hurd and the choir play a celebration medley. <laughs>
Well, I was just here a couple days ago because we had our Good Friday service. And of course, Good Friday is always a more somber service as we contemplate the meaning of Jesus' sacrifice. So what a joy it is to be here this morning surrounded by so many people, by so many bright colors of the flowers, of the triumphant note in the music, to know that we have gotten through Good Friday and we now get to celebrate together the great victory, the great victory of all reality, of all of history here on this Easter Sunday morning. In 1 Peter, the Apostle Peter praises God for what was accomplished on Easter. He says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you. We know that this inheritance is our invitation into a new life, into a new relationship with God and with Jesus. And so, as we worship, I invite you to say yes to this inheritance, to say yes to the resurrection love of Jesus. As the author Brennan Manning once said, for me, the most radical demand of Christian faith lies in summoning the courage to say yes to the present risenness of Jesus Christ. You see, when we say he is risen, we're not saying we remember something that happened in the past. We are recognizing the truth of the present reality that we worship a living, powerful King Jesus. So we invite you to say yes to his risenness, to say yes to his sovereignty over your lives. So if you're able, please stand, and let's say yes by worshiping together. Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin, lost without hope with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace so free washes over me You have made My chains, I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom, he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me.
Amen. Well, praise God. Welcome to church. Welcome to Easter Sunday. We are so thrilled that you're here this morning. Uh, we love this next song because it, uh, it just proclaims that God brings life where there is death, that he brings renewal where there is, where things have broken down. And um, if you're in a place this morning where you need a little bit of that reminder that God brings the new, brings the revival, brings the freshness, um, this song is for you. So let's, let's continue singing together. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures of faith are never enough. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Sing, I'm not afraid. Well, I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Amen. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Let's sing that again, church. Lord, there's nothing. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. We know it's true. Turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. Turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the Better than you, Lord, there's nothing, 
Nothing is better than you There, oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you Lord, there's nothing Nothing is better than you You turn graves in the garden turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Amen. Praise God. Well, we, we do, we've done something uh, for years at this church, and I'm going to do it right now because I love it. But I'm going to say, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's try one more time. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Praise God. Well, at this time, step out, say hello to someone next to you. Just get, tell them happy Easter that they're loved. All right, good morning, church. Find your seats. Good morning. Good to see everybody. We have a few announcements. Youth Summer Camp is coming on June 17th through the 21st. We're headed to Rock and Water Christian Camp, where we, we, I say we like I'll be there where we will spend time in nature canyoneering. Have you ever heard of canyoneering? Is that like hiking? Well, I don't know. You'll be doing something involved with a canyon, team building, and river rafting. Sign-ups are available for everyone entering the sixth grade in the fall through those going into 12th grade. The cost is $445 per student. If interested, please contact Rochelle at the email on the screen. I should have told you all to pull out your phone because this, this is very interactive. If you need to reach people, you'll have to take a picture. Next, Vacation Bible School is coming. Save the date, July 8th through the 12th. It'll be 9 a.m. to 1215 each day. This year's theme is Camp Firelight. VBS has opened the kids four years old to those who are entering sixth grade in the fall. The cost is $45 and will include a t-shirt and snacks. More information and registration details are coming soon. And finally, we 
keep the doors open and we help serve the community with your time, talent, and treasure. So I'm gonna ask the ushers to come forward. We're very fancy here at St. Andrews, so there's three ways you can give. You can either give at the baskets as they get passed, there's a box out the back door of the narthex, or on the back of your bulletin is a QR code, and you could get super fancy and do it electronically. So we will take time for the offering, and our choir ensemble will play a song for us. Thanks. Sunday morning, Jesus rose up from the grave. Early one Sunday morning, Jesus rose. If my Jesus had come down from the cross, then my soul would still be lost. So glad that early one Sunday morning, Jesus rose. Jesus rose, oh, Mary and Martha shouted, 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 the stone had been rolled away. Mary and Martha shouted, shouted, if my Jesus had come down from the cross, oh, my Jesus, then my soul would still be lost, so glad that early one Sunday. Jesus rose, Jesus rose, oh, Jesus went up to glory, there he sits upon the throne, in glory, Jesus went up to glory, where he reigns, if my Jesus had come down from the cross, then my soul would still be lost, so Sunday morning, Jesus rose, Jesus rose, Jesus rose, Jesus rose, Jesus rose, Jesus rose, Jesus rose. Jesus rose, Jesus rose, Jesus rose.
Well, our morning prayer is interactive this morning. We invite you to read along in the liturgy pamphlet, if you have it with you. And if you don't, that's okay, because the only thing that you have to shout, or at least say, is, Hear us, Lord of glory. And you'll be cued on the prayer pamphlet here, but I'll also help you along as well. So again, we'll say all together, Hear us, Lord of glory, at the end of each stanza of the prayer. So let's pray together. O Christ, after your resurrection... You appeared to your disciples. You breathed on them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You gave joy and exultation to the whole creation. Through your victory, we pray to you, hear us, Lord of glory. O Christ, after your resurrection, you sent out your disciples to teach all nations and to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You promised to be with them and us until the end of the world. Through your victory, we pray to you, hear us, Lord of glory. O Christ, through your resurrection, you lifted us up and filled us with rejoicing. Through your salvation, you enrich us with your gifts. Renew our lives and fill our hearts with joy. Through your victory, we pray to you, hear us, Lord of glory. O Christ, you are glorified by angels in heaven and worshipped on earth. On the glorious feast of your resurrection, we pray to you, hear us, Lord of glory. Save us, O Christ our Lord, in your goodness. Extend your mercy to your people who await the resurrection and have mercy on us. Hear us, Lord of glory. O merciful God, you raised your beloved Son, and in your love, you established him as head of your church and ruler of the universe. By your goodness, we pray, hear us, Lord of glory. Amen. And now let's all pray together the words that Jesus taught us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to stand if you're able, and we'll sing together the Gloria Patri. invite you to remain standing as Dr. Hurd and the choir lead us in Christ the Lord is risen today. Thank you. 
You may be seated. It's a joy to worship with you on this Easter morning. I want to say hello to you if this is uh, the first time you're with us. My name's Peter. I'm the pastor here at St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church. I just want to extend a welcome to you. We're so glad that you are here. Uh, Before I get into our text for this morning, I want to ask you a question. It comes from an author named A.J. Sherrill, who talks about the one superfood that is better than all the other superfoods. This food has vitamin K, it has fiber, it has vitamin C. It's said to help you with heart disease, help you with memory loss. Anybody know what this superfood is? Can you guess what it is? I have it on the screen here for us today, I think. Nope, that's not the right one. <laughs> you, you, that one. <laughs> double, double, right? No, it's actually the first one. It was the blueberry. The blueberry is the superfood above all other superfoods nutritionists claim, right? But what if I told you that there was one word in the scripture, and this word is like this blueberry, and that it's like a turnkey. If you open this turnkey, that the spiritual life lays itself out before you, that the beauty of the goodness of God, if you turn this one key, would be discovered. What would you say that one word would be? Don't put it up yet. Think about it. What do you think that one word is? Beautiful. I got one for you. It's the word here. The word here. See, a lot of people think that you can just kind of passively go throughout your life. And that maybe one day God will just knock you on your head. And you'll go, oh, there he is. It's real. God is real and in my life now. And that does happen for some people that they just get knocked down and they all of a sudden are totally transformed. 
and they experience God. But for most people, for most people, like any good relationship, the way in which you discover who God is is by making intentional space and time. And I guarantee you that if you make intentional space and time for your relationship with God, that you will discover that God is already making that time and space for you. And so I want to invite you this morning as we read this scripture that has changed history. I want you to hear it. I want you to hear it in the way it was intended to be heard this morning so that I can accomplish my job, which is to help you to discover the beauty of your soul that Jesus Christ has given to you. So with that, I'm going to take a moment of silence to center ourselves so we can bring ourselves with intention to hear, and then I'll read it. So will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, help us to hear this wonderful good news this morning. Prepare our hearts. Give us listening ears, the ones that only you can give. We want to hear from you. We bring our full selves before you and we ask that you would speak now to us. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. A couple of months ago, I got to go thrift store shopping with my friend Mike. And it's a special opportunity to go thrift store shopping with Mike because he does this uh, perusing through different thrift stores in order to remember his mom. His mom had passed away the year before, and so he goes through looking for little knickknacks, the things that he used to do with his mother, now he invites friends to do with him. And so as we were doing this together, he asked me a question, knowing that I'm a pastor, we've been friends for a while. He thought that I'd be the right person to ask this question to. It was a big question for him. It was a question about a quote that was written on his mother's casket. And he asked me this. He said, do you know where this quote comes from? And then he said this, all shall be well. All shall be well. All matter of things shall be well. And I got excited because I get asked a lot of questions that I don't know the answer to, but I knew the answer (laughs) to this question. This quote is from the first book ever written in the English language by a woman. It's a woman named Julian of Norwich. Julian was born into the Hundred Years' War, and she died before it ended. She lived through multiple famines and multiple plagues. In fact, one plague actually almost took her life. 
she lived much of her life as a cloistered nun in a small room next to a church. And it was in this small room where she learned how to hear God's voice. And so she began to write down this book called Revelations of Divine Love. And the statement that makes its way through the corridors of church history to us today is this statement, all shall be well, all shall be well, all matter of things shall be well. I believe that's what was happening when these disciples learned that the tomb was empty and they went running all the way to discovering these clothes and the emptiness of this tomb. And standing there in that place, they learned something. They began to believe something with all that they are. The very place where it was understood that death had won. The very place where they understood that because of their failure, things had come to a total crash in utter defeat. They now stood with a new question in their hearts and minds. It's a question that's so beautifully unpacked by Paul later on when he just raises this question in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? There was something that did die there that day as the disciples stood in that empty grave, but it wasn't what they expected. The thing that died was their shame. The shame that they felt over their sin, their failure, the thing that died that day was their fear of the outside world and all the threats that had brought Jesus to death. But now they stood in an empty tomb and they realized that even death could not win. That the grave was indeed empty. What died is their insecurity over whether they could truly live out this faith that Jesus had taught them knowing what it would cost them, in that place, insecurity died. And they stood and they looked out, imagining for the first time a whole new reality. And so it is with such joy that I get to stand here today and declare the truth that because Jesus willfully endured the cross— fueled by divine love to take the, on the sins of the entire world and through his ultimate sacrifice made it possible for every one of us to be reconciled to God and to each other. And this forgiveness, this undeserved grace given through his death was not the end, but the beginning of a new life that could face down any issue any darkness, any evil. And so I can stand here with all sincerity and in truth declare with Julian of Norwich and my friend Mike, all shall be well, all shall be well. All matter of things shall be well. No matter what grave you're facing today, all shall be well. And I'll take this lightly, I think of my friend Dave. My friend Dave, who was my Sunday school teacher at Malibu Presbyterian Church growing up. He was that guy who was a little bit older and a little bit cooler. You know how you need that guy in your life to kind of guide you? Well, the coolest thing to me about Dave when I was young was that he was a baseball player and a Dodger fan. That's what I was too. And he, he led Sunday school by playing Bible baseball. And famously, one 
Bible baseball ended with a piece of plastic fruit flown through one of the church windows. I won't tell you who threw it through there. (laughs) But 20 years later, I stood with Dave in the ashes of that church because it burned down. We pray together and we mourn together the loss of our church. Then seven years later, though separately, I stood in the ashes of his childhood home that burned down in the Woolsey fire. You need that person, don't you? That person that's just a little further down the road, that's a living, breathing example of all this stuff that we talk about, all this Christianity that we talk about, but what does it mean to see a living example, an embodied example of who Jesus is, of the resurrection? And unfortunately, the story doesn't end there in the relationship with me and Dave because a few months ago, Dave got diagnosed with ALS. And he's been giving updates about his experience. He's doing vlog updates and he's showing the new uh, things that he has, a stair chair that helps him get up the stairs. Um, and a, a wheel vehicle that he's popping wheelies on, trying to make everybody laugh on Facebook, making his daughters laugh on Facebook. And every time he gives an update, he says, I'm doing great, but for the ALS. And Dave is that guy. He is an example to me. His living, breathing example of his faith no matter what the circumstance, I stand in awe of. I see as evidence of the resurrection. And one way I know that is because, of course, I wasn't going to share his story without messaging him and asking him if it was okay. And this is what he wrote back to me. He said, go for it, man. This is awesome. I'm honored. This world is not my home. I have total peace about what God has for me. And so as we stand here on this morning, the morning of the resurrection, and we think about those graves in our lives, those pains in our lives. I don't know what you dragged in here today, but what I do know is whatever it is, That if you listen in closely enough and you can really hear what God would want to say because of Jesus' death and resurrection, you can hear the voice of God proclaim, all shall be well, all shall be well, all matter of things shall be well. That's why we are here. That's why we give all glory to Jesus Christ who's enthroned in heaven right now, the saving one who's made it possible for us to have this new life. Will you pray with me? Lord Jesus, help us to receive this great truth of your resurrection. Lord, in our bones, may it give us hope as the world throws all that it has at us tries to derail us and get us off course, Lord, help us to focus in on you. And the deepest, most meaningful thing about our life, which is that you love us, that you've forgiven us, and that you've redeemed us, and that you've restored us, and so nothing else can stand in the way of that great love. Lord, be in our praise and worship now. May you speak to each and every one of our hearts. Will you stand and we'll sing one last song together. All 
my words fall sure I got nothing new How could I express All my gratitude I could sing these songs As I often do Every song must stay And you never do So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a hallelujah Hallelujah And I know much, but I'm nothing else fit for a king, except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I've got a one. I've got just one move With my arms stretched wide I will worship you So I throw up my hands And praise you again and again Cause all that I have is a Nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah, Then come on my soul Oh, come on my soul Don't you get shy of me Lift up your song Cause you've got a lion inside of those lungs Get up and praise the Lord Oh, come on my soul don't you get shy of me, lift up your song. Cause you got a lion inside of those lungs. Get up and praise the Lord. Come on, my soul. Oh, come on, my soul. Don't you get shy of me, lift up your song. You got a lion inside of those lungs. Once more, church. So I throw up my hands and praise you again and again. All that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king. Except for a heart singing hallelujah, hallelujah. All right.
right, well, as many of you know, this is a bit of a tricky Easter for pastors and churches, right, because of the potential rain. I don't know if you had to cancel your Easter egg hunt and then reopen it again, but uh, I know many churches had to do that. (laughs) So um, we want to invite you now to continue this worship as we um, are going to have a couple baptisms. Evie and Charity are going to get baptized today down in the fellowship hall. So there's two ways to get to the fellowship hall. One is just go out these doors and you make a left and you go down the stairs. You probably follow a bunch of people. Or if stairs are tricky, then you can go out to the sidewalk out there. You can go all the way down PCH and make it right. And that you can get in the fellowship hall that way. There's refreshments. There's uh, pictures you can take. There's just a, a, a time of fellowship together for the church. I want to thank you again for joining us, and we would love to have you. If you're looking for a church, we'd love to have you here at St. Andrews um, to walk out your faith and to have a community to do that with. With that said, let me give you this benediction. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with every good for doing his will and may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace and God bless you. You turn morning to dancing You give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. into garden you turn bones into armies you turn seas into highways you're the only one who cares you're the only one who cares you're the only one who cares oh there's no Ha! <laughs>